Finding the volume of a cylinder in a real-world context, lesson 13.1c. We've learned that the formula for the volume of a cylinder is V is equal to base times height, or if we don't know the base, we can use pi r squared for the area of a circle times the height. And since the base of a cylinder is a circle, to find the area of a base, we need to find the area of a circle. The formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. And remember to square the radius. That would be pi times r times r. Pi times the radius times the radius. Be careful if given a diameter. Remember, it's twice the radius. We would do 2 times the radius is equal to the diameter. Bob's family has a rain barrel to collect rainwater to water their garden. About how many gallons of water can the barrel hold? Now it's giving us that one cubic foot is approximately 7.5 gallons. So a cubic foot of water is approximately 7.5 gallons. It's telling us to find the volume of the barrel if the diameter is 1 and 8 tenths feet. It's giving us in the diagram that the height is 2 and 3 tenths feet. First thing we do is find the radius. We were given the diameter. Well, we know 2 times the radius is equal to 1 and 8 tenths. We divide both sides by this 2 coefficient to get 1 radius is equal to 9 tenths. Now we can put the information into the formula. V is equal to pi r squared h. We're going to do 3.14 approximately for pi multiplied by 9 tenths squared times the height, 2 and 3 tenths. Well, 9 tenths squared is 81 hundredths. We multiply the 3.14 times the 81 hundredths and we get 2.5434. We multiply that by the height and we get approximately 5.84982 feet cubed. So that's the cubic feet that it can hold. Now we need to use the information it gave us. We multiply this 5.8492 feet cubed by the 7 and 5 tenths gallons. We multiply them together, and there are six decimal hops in the equation. So that means there's going to be six hops in the product, we get 43.873650. This is a trailing zero, and we don't need to write it. So we can just say that the volume of the rain barrel is 43.87365 gallons, or approximately 44 gallons if we round to the nearest gallon. This 8 tells the 3 to go up. They all drop off. We get 44 gallons. Now, there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than another. Let's try another way. The diagram is telling us that the height is 2 and 3 tenths feet, and we have found that the radius is 9 tenths. We do 2 times the radius is equal to the 1 and 8 tenths feet, and we found that it was 9 tenths for the radius. We substitute the information into the formula, and we know that 9 tenths squared is 0 0.81. We multiply that by the 2.3 for the height, and we get 1.863 feet cubed and pi. We can write pi after it. We have 1.863 pi cubic feet. Now, do you notice there's an equal sign coming down here? I didn't use approximately. Because remember, pi represents all the digits of pi, so we can use an equal sign when we actually use the symbol for pi. When we use 3.14, we need to use that approximation symbol. So the barrel holds 1.863 cubic feet of water. To find the number of gallons it holds, we multiply by the conversion factor it gave us. It said that one cubic foot of water was 7.5 gallons. We have our 1.863 pi feet cubed. We're going to multiply it to this conversion factor, 7.5 over 1. We can write this over 1 so we can multiply straight across. This feet cubed 
cancels out this feet cubed as feet cubed over feet cubed, same numerator and denominator, so we can cancel it out. So basically, we just have 1.863 pi times 7.5. We do the math and get 13.9725 pi. We multiply it by 3.14, so now we do have an approximation symbol, and we get 43.87365 and rounding it to the nearest gallon, again, we get 44 gallons. So we found two different ways to solve it, one in terms of pi, using these equal signs, and then multiplying it by the conversion factor, and the other one, we did use 3.14 for pi. Now for this one, we have a jar that's got some jam in it, but there's some missing jam. It's only got four centimeters down here, though the jar is a 12 centimeter jar, and it's telling us the radius is five centimeters. So how much jam is missing from the jar? Well, there's 12 centimeters for the jar, four centimeters is left. That means eight centimeters of its height is missing. There's eight centimeters of height of the jam missing. We use our volume formula for a cylinder, and we know we have 8 for our height, we have 5 for our radius, we have 5 squared, and it's approximately 3.14 for pi. We multiply 5 times 5 and get 25. We can multiply 25 times 8 very easily with mental math. That's 200. That's like 8 quarters. So that would be $2. So it's 200. We multiply the 3.14 times 200 and get 628. We know it's approximately 628 cubic centimeters. There's approximately 628 cubic centimeters of jam missing from the jar. Now, as I said before, there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than the other. We can also find the volume of the total jar and subtract the remaining volume to find out what is missing. So for the total jar, we do 12 for our height and multiply 5 times 5 is 25 times 12. When we multiply it by the 3.14 for the pi, we get approximately 942 cubic centimeters. That's what should be in the whole jar. Now we can find the volume of the 4 centimeters. We do 25 for the radius squared. We multiply it by the 4 that is remaining. 25 times 4 is 100. We multiply 3.14 for pi and get 314 cubic centimeters. Now we can take the volume of the total jar and subtract what's left, the 314, and we get 628. And just like the other way we did it, we get that approximately 628 cubic centimeters is missing. It's nice to know both ways of how to do it, but you may find that one way is easier than the other. We're finished with lesson 13.1. We're moving on to 13.2. We're going to be learning about the volume of a cone. Have a great day and join me for the next lesson. Bye.